Have you got my um, PowerPoint up there, Stace? Thanks. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Don't mind me moving this closer to you, do you? I like being close. <laughs> I enjoy it. I like relationship with people. I think it's important. One of the most important things we can do. Because it's through the relationship with God that unlocks the keys to all the things that we need in heaven. All the things. It'll unlock all your destiny and your purpose that um, God calls you to. Everything that you'll ever do, it's already in you. It's actually... Hello? Oh, we're back on. Praise the Lord. Can you can all hear me now? Yeah, good stuff. Awesome. So, I had a really great day with the Lord yesterday. I spent the day um, just really meditating and relaxing, and I found a place of rest again. You know, like life gets busy for everyone, doesn't it? We all get busy. We, um, we all get into the rigors of work and, you know, the relentlessness of doing things and just trying to tick boxes and, you know, fulfill goals and all the rest of it. And yesterday was a great day because I just had time to really sit around and just um, look at the Word of God and just, just see what, you know, the Lord wanted to say today. And, um, you know, we're following this, this book, Acts, Kingdom Power. I don't know if you have them yet, <clears throat> but um, Lisa's got a few of them at the moment. If you want them, I think they're about $16. She's got them with her. She'll be here next week, I'm sure. Is that... Tuesday? Okay. Yeah, it's available as a as an ebook if you want to download it as well. That's that's how we do it in our study group. We just we basically look at it on the computer and um, we find that's just an easy way for us, you know, which is good. But um, we're here to talk about the Holy Ghost this morning. And um, it's session two in in the book. And um, session two is about the kingdom power appears. Now we know that the Holy Spirit's been well and truly alive eternally. So to even try and gauge that, we really can't do with our minds because we sort of kind of think that et eternity is like time with an extended period of time onto it. But in actual fact, it's a totally different address. So it's not it's not something we can even gauge or understand. So. I'm not even going to try and put my mind into that. <coughs> yeah, it's way, way too much. Was, yeah. I've heard Chuck Missler do some great mathematics on stuff, but one of those, it's one of those things you just can't explain. We won't know it until we get there anyway. So don't worry about what you can't change, eh? Um, the kingdom power appears, Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In order to do that, we need something bigger than us. We can't do it just as us. Because there's, there's not enough of us to do it. There wasn't enough of Jesus to do it. He needed the Holy Ghost. He needed someone to bear witness of him. We bear witness of Christ, don't we? Yeah. Amen. And so we need that. We need the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this working. Yeah, mate. She's turned on. You're not flicking. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So everybody can see that? Is that okay? 
when I was doing these PowerPoints, I was a bit unsure about the size of the font, so just excuse me if they're really big. It's not because I think you're silly, it's just I didn't have any idea. Yeah. On the day he ascended to heaven, into heaven, Jesus made a promise to the assembled believers. This promise anticipated the day of Pentecost, when they would be baptised with the Holy Spirit, Acts 1.5. Now, as I was saying, we know that the Spirit's been active for a long time because we know that David made claims in, in Psalms where he said, don't take your spirit from me. So we know that the Holy Spirit has been active for a, a long period of time. But what we're talking about here is, is basically when the Spirit was given to all men as such. Where access for all believers... Um, is there to work in the power of God. So in Acts 2 it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. I know that I've experienced the Spirit of God because when I got baptised, there was a mindset in me that changed greatly, quite dramatically actually. And it was something that um, I really didn't have any idea about and I really didn't have any intention of. But I know that when I got baptised, the first thing that the Spirit of God said to me is, I need to be married because I wasn't living right and um, my wife is a good Christian woman but you know she put up with me for a period of time <laughs> and um, you could imagine the hallelujahs coming out of her mouth but um, it does you know when the power of God comes on somebody it brings transformation and change you can always tell where God's been because the trademark is left well and truly you know when someone's been doing burnouts on the asphalt because you can see the skid marks, can't you? It's true, you can see the marks on people where God's been. You can see the marks where sin's been too, obviously. But God is here and he's redeemed us of that. We want to be walking in this power. This is what we want. You see, I don't want to leave, like a lot of my family's left in the past, I don't want to leave ruin behind me when I when I step out of this world, I want to leave a legacy. Yeah. That's all of us, isn't it? We all want to do that. I know. Yeah. You know, there's nothing mightier than having a, um, a legacy to leave where people know there was something greater that come out of that person than just himself. Because that's the witness of Christ. Amen. The kingdom power appears. A lot of these slides I've I've just pulled off the actual um, the booklet and just sort of shortcut them a bit. So if you if you look at them, you'll notice a lot of them are the same. In Acts one to five, the spirit baptism is the empowering for ministry promised in Luke two twenty four forty nine. When Jesus said, "Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you." but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you endured with power on high. Jesus' focus on that was for the disciples to be empowered by the Spirit of God so that they would be able to do the work that he did. You see, he knew the battle that was in front of them. He knew what they were going to face. So he needed, he needed them to wait, wait until that power comes i mean today we don't have to wait the power is here we're filled with the spirit and if we we have access to it you know we don't we don't have to wait but if you're not today there's going to be opportunity at the end of this service to do something about that you know this focuses on the mission of the believers one that cannot be accomplished without the supernatural holy spirit baptism The word of God without the Holy Ghost is dead. Your faith without works is dead. But all have to be coupled by the Spirit of God, the power of God. 
Without it, it's useless. In John 14, six, uh, 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will, leave, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because he isn't looking for him. Because they, uh, Sorry, because it, they aren't looking for him and doesn't recognise him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later be in you. Amen? No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. They're pretty, mold, they're pretty bold statements, aren't they? It amazes me, you know, that the God that we know is every bit personal and individual to each one of us at every second of the day all over the world, you know? Whether you know God or you don't know God, it's, I don't think that's, well, it's a big issue, but it's not the issue, you know, because God is working in everyone's life regardless. But those that are submitted to him will find their destination probably a little bit quicker than those that aren't. You know? So there's a, few, there's a few names that the Holy Spirit is, has been given. And one of them is the helper. And it looks like a Greek word there. Say it again. You're doing better than I am. Yeah. So through the uh, Strong's Concordance, it's a compound word from para, beside, and kalo, to call. Thus the meaning to, uh, of called one to one side. The word signifies an in intercessor, comforter, helper, advocate, or counsellor. So that's who the Holy Spirit is to us. And he's more than that. He's, he's, this is not just the, the end of it. It's only just the beginning. I mean, I'm no... I'm no expert on this i'm only just telling you what i know and what's been explained in this book but one thing is for certain that god's word is truth and where we're not certain we can always look towards the truth you know there's a lot of as we're going to read on in a minute there's a lot of um a lot of doctrines and ideas about the holy spirit as there is about tongues and all the rest of it and we'll we'll do that uh where are we in non-biblical literature, parakalatos has the technical meaning of an, eternity, uh, of an attorney who appears in court on behalf of another. In addition to imbuing the believer with power, the Holy Spirit leads believers to greater apprehension of gospel truths. John 14, 26. In addition to general help and guidance, he gives the strength to endure the hostility of this world system. And Murray touched on that earlier. He was talking about forgiveness. And what's interesting is that we know that there's a lot of commands in the Bible, but there's actually probably two things that God really asks of us. One is the forgiveness, and one's, another one's to humble ourselves. So two things that he can't actually do for us, which is quite amazing, isn't it? He still needs our will to be his will, doesn't he? He still needs that. You know, we've been put on this earth with dominion. And so our job is to do it with power. And um, we're not going to be able to do it without the Spirit of God. That is for sure. He's a witness, isn't he? Holy Ghost is a witness. Jesus invested three years of his life in the apostles. He took them everywhere with him and patiently explained the spiritual dynamics of his kingdom. He sent them out to practice te uh, preaching the good news of the kingdom. He saw, there was to wit uh, he saw to it that they witnessed his death and resurrection. That's what we just did. We just witnessed his death and resurrection right there. As Jesus' life and words faithfully witnessed to the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit, so his disciples' lives, lives and words were to bear witness to him by the same power of the Holy Spirit. Not only did another helper bear witness concerning Jesus to them, he would also bear witness through them to the world.
You're a walking epistle, each one of you. I'm a walking epistle. We're all the gospel on legs. Each one of us. Whether you think you are or you're not, that's what you're made of. You might be unaware of it, but you are. You're a walking epistle. Read by many men and women. And they see you. They see the trademark. They see the marks left. They know whether they're good marks or bad marks. You don't have to be a genius for that. Amen. Very quiet in here. <laughs> it's not too heavy, is it? We're all happy here this morning? We're happy? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, I like happy. Happy's good. Loyal witness. One thing about the Holy Spirit I've discovered is he's very consistent. He's consistent with the Word of God. He's consistent with his actions and his motivations. And he's, he is the Spirit of truth. He'll always bring truth where deception lies in your system. You know that? And I'll tell you that when I'm in a place where I'm being deceived even at the low, at the smallest little level, that deception is still enough to separate me from God. Not to separate me from the kingdom, but just to separate me from that presence of God, you know. And sometimes we come into a place where we feel that, man, I just haven't heard from God. I just haven't heard from God, you know. Like, And I, I have those moments, just like everyone, you know. No, I'm no different to you. <laughs> and... Um, I find that when, the, when you come to that place of repentance, what we're talking about, forgiveness, man, that just changes it all together. Com- completely opens it up, Mouse. Completely. You know, the power of forgiveness, it's incredible. It'll change your life. Hallelujah. Through the word of God and the instruction of the Holy Spirit, we have also become witnesses to Christ. We too have received the power from on high. Luke 24, 49. Just as the apostles were prepared by Christ to minister his truth to the word, to the world, so he will give us all we uh, so he will give us all we need to reach out others for him. It's already in you. Through both our words and our deeds, empowered by the Holy Spirit, the Master and his kingdom ministry can be made known to the ends of the earth. And there's a whole lot of scriptures there. The Holy Spirit will make you fit for the Master's use. Amen? Yeah, it will. When you're filled with the Ghost, there's nothing that can stop you. Nothing that can stop you. Where God wants you to go, He'll provide everything needed to do so. No question of it. Joe Schneider asked me a question down here. He says, what's stopping you? I said, nothing. Nothing stopping me. He says, I'd love to see you on the field. I said, well, I'll pray about it. <laughs> Wasn't very committing, was it? <laughs> I'll pray about it. That's the ultimate uh, backup answer when you're a Christian. You don't know what to say. I'll pray about it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to find the Hebrew translation now. Uh, so, being filled with the Spirit. Ultimately, this is what we all need. I think all of us are um, born again in here, I'm pretty sure. If you're not, there's an opportunity for that as well. The Holy Spirit is the, is the person and the power by which assistance and ability are given to the believer to serve and share life and power of God's kingdom with others as we were saying earlier the word of God without the 
without the Holy Ghost is just, it's dead, you know what I mean? When you minister to someone, it's got to be the good news. If it's not the good news, they're not interested. Amen? It's the Holy Spirit in you that brings life to the words that you speak. Without that life, it's just another story. doesn't matter how good the book is. It's just another story. The Holy Spirit power must be received. The Bible tells us in uh, Luke eleven thirteen, you have to ask for it. It's not necessarily just a given, it's an ask. We ask for the Holy Spirit. But once it's given, you'll know it for sure. There'll be no mistake. There'll be no mistake that you've, you've got it. That's why we have all these Mike Francines and Wayne Gwilliams because not only were they filled with the Spirit but they were, they were given their lives over to it. Last time Wayne was here, I was having a chat to him and he, I said to him, Wayne, I said, you've dedicated yourself to really seeing something happen here in Australia. And he said to me, he says, He said, it cost me everything. Now, what drives a person to do that? What drives a person to give up all they have and everything they are to see the kingdom of God come to a country he doesn't even live in anymore? I mean, that's the Holy Ghost, isn't it? This, without the Holy Spirit, it's, yeah. I need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God, let's be moved by your word this morning, God. Father, we need to be moved by the power of your word. God, your truth is truth, and that's all there is to it. God, we can't, we can't sit around messing around with the truth, Lord. We need to know that you are real. Yeah. So real, Lord. We thank you, God. Acts 2, 1, uh, sorry, Acts 2, 4. Speaking in tongues. Another, uh, another topic that can cause a little bit of friction in churches, depending on whether you're a mainline church person or whether you're a Holy Ghost hand-clapping kind of character, you know, will depend on whether you, you believe in um, the tongues. Um, I can tell you for certain, Acts 2.1, it says it's absolutely biblical, absolutely, completely biblical. Is it the only... Uh, characteristic of receiving the spirit no there's a lot of them there's many characteristics it's just one of them and you know either ends of the scale you, you can be unbalanced you know if we take a truth and make it the truth you're in error you know if we say that speaking in tongues is just the only thing that you know tells you that you're a holy ghost things like sort of pinning a badge on you but on the other end of the scale you know saying that it's not real and it's of the devil or whatever then that's not right either it's you know somewhere in the middle there you have to find that place. You know, you find it through God's word. You know, God's word is true. So doctrine surrounding the Holy Spirit and his activity in the church today are often cause a cause for division and distrust within the body of Christ. Once again, it depends on the kind of church, you see. Whether it's charismatic, whether it's mainline, you know. I've heard of many church splits which have happened over the years because of such a thing. And usually what happens, the, the part that doesn't want to submit themselves to the Spirit of God, they go and do their thing. The ones that want to submit themselves to the Spirit of God, they go and do their thing. You know, one grows, one doesn't. That's what happens. It is imperative that we understand what Scripture has to say about the Holy Spirit and His role in the lives of believers. Firstly, the Bible unequivocally declares, be filled with the Spirit. It's important. It's, it's really important. It's not just a good idea. <laughs> it's a God idea. Yeah? It's in Ephesians 5.18. Be filled with the Spirit. Secondly, the Bible reveals that the person of the Holy Spirit has been 
been the primary agent in all ministry of the world throughout the centuries. So once again, like we were speaking about before, he's been active in all our lives and lives before us, way before us. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit operates in the church as a definite personality. He is a person. A person given as a gift to the church to assure that the continual ministry of the resurrected Christ is expressed and verified. <laughs> Amen. That's the power of the gospel. It's the crucifixion right there. Been, we've been doing this for over 2,000 years, still being proclaimed. I can't think of one tradition that actually has lasted that long that's been a great tradition. Marriage, same thing. <laughs> so, making the claim that the Holy Ghost is a person, we have to be able to understand why, why do we say that? Why is he a person? We have to be able to relate to him. We have to be able to understand and be prompted by him to make the choices that we do in Christ. Whatever it is that we do, we want them to be well-educated decisions, don't we, in Christ. We want to be able to make the right choices because I don't know about you, but, you know, I feel like time's really short on this planet. I don't know about everyone else's feeling, but I, I feel that every choice I make is, is very, very important and it's imperative that I actually make good choices every day. You know, I do make mistakes, absolutely. But they're not deliberate. There might be miscalculations. Uh, so the Holy Spirit, he possesses the attributes of the mind, the will and the feeling. I do have a whole lot of scriptures behind all this stuff if you question it. Um, I just didn't put them on there. There's just too much to put on there. He engages in such activities as revealing, teaching, witnessing, interceding, speaking, commanding and testifying. So when you're reading the word of God, that's that feeling you get when you say, whoa, hallelujah, I really got that, you know. He's the one that will bring up those scriptures that are deep inside you that you just can't remember and you say, I'm no good at remembering scriptures like I say. But then all of a sudden when I'm talking to someone, it pops up like that. And it's like, oh, that's the Holy Spirit, you know. That's the one. You know, you don't have to worry about remembering all that stuff. Just get it in there. Don't worry about, don't worry about all the stuff about it. Like, if you can remember it, great. That's good on, good on you. You're doing better than me. But just get it in there. You've got to draw on something, you know. Fire's got to have something to burn. You can't, you can't burn nothing. <laughs> Yeah. He has a relationship with human persons. He can be grieved, lied to and blasphemed. I think in some of my, and I'm sure in your lives, in some of the areas where you felt down and put out by certain things in your life or by people, whatever it is, um, one of my greatest saving graces is the Holy Ghost. I find that when I come into the presence of God and I just sit there, and just be mindful of the things of heaven. However he does it, I have no clue. But he just brings peace and joy and rest into my life. And that stuff corrects the things that are wrong in a godly way. I find that the problem may not be solved as such, but my attitude and my, my vision of that thing changes completely. I no longer see it from the perspective I was looking at it, which is very focus you know it can be very minute he possesses the divine attributes of the godhead he's eternal omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient you'll have to look all those up it can be a little study for you so he is Referred to by such names as the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Promise, the Spirit of Truth, 
the spirit of grace, the spirit of life, the spirit of adoption, and the spirit of holiness. Amen. I'm glad I don't have that many names. (laughs) Uh, Have you received the Holy Spirit? So this is the question on on our lips. Have we received the Holy Spirit? And it's an important question. And I might ask you that ask you that this way. I'm not putting any pressure on anybody or anything like that. Don't don't get freaked out. When when you came to Christ for the first time in your life, you felt clean. Your life was suddenly cleaned up. Something changed in your life. You didn't quite understand it, but overall it just felt great. And all you wanted to tell, do is tell everybody about Jesus Christ, you know. That's that initial engagement with, with Jesus. But there is a, a further baptism of what we call the baptism of the Spirit, which is the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And there's actually, they've actually pinpointed a guideline here of um, a pattern, you might say. And we know a lot of times we don't try and form patterns around God because God can do whatever he wants, pretty much. As long as it's within the boundaries of his word, you know, you can't go against his word. He's truth and spirit. But have you received, this, received the Holy Spirit in Acts 19, 1 to 6? You may, for the prom- you may, for the promise is as fully yours today at any time in the past to receive the blessing of the holy spirit baptism you need to do a number of things so there's a couple of things and i've just i've ironed them out here just so we can look at them i know most of you are already fully fledged first thing you need to be born again if you're not born again you won't see the kingdom of god that's the truth a person who is going to be filled with the spirit must have an indwelling spirit and must belong to jesus i don't know about you but i learn a few things through this <laughs> yeah that's romans 8 9 Romans is a great book if you want to read about being born again. Second thing is you have to ask. You've got to be born again and you have to ask for it. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit, you must ask. The Bible says if we ask for the Holy Spirit, that prayer will be answered. In Luke 11, 13. That's the truth of it. If you want it, you can have it. God's not holding it back. I can tell you that for certain. And I think this is the part where we sort of all become a little bit unstuck. It's the surrender. Surrender is the hardest part that it's taken place in my life and I think it's probably, probably one of the hardest parts of taking place in most people's lives. Some people seem to surrender to God pretty easily. Some people seem to do it pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I rebelled for a while. It uh, came a time when I just got a bit tired of that. The Apostle Paul made this need clear in the book of Romans when he said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Romans 12, 1. Fourthly, you must be willing to obey the Spirit. So now you've got this spirit, what are you going to do? What am I going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? God does not give this power to someone and then say you can take the part you like and leave the part you don't like. If you want to be immersed in the Holy Spirit, you need to be prepared to obey the Spirit. In the festivals in in, um, Israel, when they used to kill a lamb to eat it, they would eat the whole lamb, everything, intestines, everything. Everything was consumed. There was nothing that was left. 
Obviously, the bones were, were the only thing they couldn't, but everything was consumed. And the Bible talks about that, the acceptance of, of Jesus Christ as whole, not just the blessing, but also the suffering of Christ. We come into all of it. When we become Christ and God-fearing people, we come into the wholeness of it all. Everything that this represents, that's what we are right there. We're products of that. Without that, that communion table, we'd be all burning, I'll tell you. You must believe. That's the big one, isn't it? Faith. The Apostle Paul said, Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The Bible says that if we live by law, you know, we won't be saved by it. We can only be saved by faith. Salvation is given as a gift. It's nothing we can boast about. It's not something we've achieved. But salvation is only a gift given by God through faith. The answer, obviously, is faith. You have to believe that if you ask, you'll receive. I, you know... Um, I've seen people receive the Holy Spirit and start talking in tongues immediately. It didn't happen to me. And I wondered why. I sort of questioned whether or not I actually was really filled with the Holy Spirit. But the truth was I was. It's just I hadn't learned or understood that part of Jesus Christ. You know? You must exercise what God has given you. Don't look for today, uh, tomorrow's manna when you haven't finished eating today's. Amen. <laughs> There's so much God's got for you in store for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to look after itself. Yeah. Having asked, having received, having been willing to obey and having believed, you need to respond in a biblical fashion. Yeah. So what's that look like? What's a biblical fashion look like? It's just a response to God's command. That's all. Just obedience. That's all it is. It's nothing nothing real dramatic. I mean, we look at a lot of these people who, who are serving God. We've had in the church, praise God for them, because they're awesome people. They've come and they've shared the truth with us. You know, the Mike Francines, the Wayne Williams, the... There are very, very many of them. We've had heaps of them. We've had all the best people here around, around us, you know. And what's the difference between them and us? Just that. I'll do it, God. I'll do it. That's all it is. You know, everything that's in you is the same that's in Mike Francine. Everything. Same that's in Wayne. Same that's in Epi. I think Epi was... Epi was the first person I'd ever seen that actually walked in really incredible, miraculous power. I mean, we've seen other preachers do stuff, but this, this guy just walked and just shared the Holy Ghost and things just started happening around the church. You know, I hadn't seen that before. Not like that. Like, that was really amazing. There's a man who's encountered the Holy Spirit in a pretty powerful way. Yeah, he's probably been anointed specially to do it too. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not saying he isn't. But what I'm saying is a man, he's put his hand up, you know. And I'll just prompt the question again, you know. What sort of legacy do you want to leave is really where I'm, where I'm going with this. You know, this is only just a foretaste of what the Holy Spirit is. There's so much more to know about the Holy Spirit through relationship with God. We can't know everything from a textbook, you know. Textbook's not nowhere near enough. Um, it can steer, steer us in the direction. Even the Bible steers us in the right direction, but we still need the Holy Spirit to, to understand what God is saying to us through his word. And I remember in my, my early years, in my transformation, when God, when God changed me, man, I used to read the word of God, and the, <laughs> it was hard to read because the words looked like they were jumping around the page. It looked like they were having a party, and I think maybe a few people have experienced that. <laughs> it was kind of strange, but... Um, I knew it was God, you know. I couldn't explain it, but, yeah. Okay.
Yeah, man. We all need the Holy Spirit for many, many reasons. You like that font size? <laughs> I was going to put butterflies and, and doves and stuff on it, but I thought that was, that was enough. <laughs> we all need the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. He's the power to understand your purpose in life. John 14, 17, he says he leads us into all truth. 14, 26, he says he's the advocate that teaches us everything. In 15, 26, he says he is the spirit of truth. And he, te he testifies all about Jesus. He leads a believer into greater understanding of the gospel truths. He's the one that empowers you to fulfill the work that God's cut out for you. You know, there's your work and there's your job. Your job's what you do to, to earn a crust, but your work is never finished, as Miles Monroe says. Your work is ongoing. It'll long go until you, you go home. Amen? And I want to do that work real well. I want to do it as best... I want to be the best disciple I can be. So is everybody born again here? Are we all born again? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Murray's born again. Hallelujah. So we all have access to the Holy Spirit, each one of us, you know. But look, I'm just going to close up here just with some prayer. And we just want to pray for some people who are unwell as well because there's a bit of sickness that have been going around the church and we need to keep uplifting people who are ill and people who are travelling and all that. But if you don't know the Holy Spirit in the way that we've spoken about this morning, if you haven't had that experience in your life, then we want to help you. We can't do it for you, but we want to pray with you and just help you and guide you in that area. Whatever it might be. Maybe you've just drifted away from things a bit lately and you just you feel like God's just not alongside you. Well, we can just get alongside you and help you. Just plug back into that power source. Eh? Because we heard the message at the table about forgiveness. And that's powerful. Forgiveness will take you into all... All the realms. It'll open all the doors, as Mother's saying. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power, God, that comes when the word of truth and spirit is, is preached, God. Lord, your promise is that you back it up with the miraculous signs and wonders father god as the preaching of the gospel goes out and the truth hits home lord father we pray for the spirit to convict convict and to bring life where there is already death to br to break the relentlessness of life to break the abuse that we have against ourselves To help clean us up, Lord. To make us well. Make us well in every way, Father. Spiritually, physically, mentally, soulfully, God. There's so many parts of us, Lord. You made us so ingeniously. But God, we just want to submit our lives to you. We want to see your spirit reign well and truly in our lives. We want to see your spirit direct us, Father. We want to believe. Lord, your word declares that if we believe, greater works will we see. God, I'm not satisfied. I haven't seen greater works. I'm not satisfied, Lord. I want to see greater works.
Thank you, Father. Father, we pray for those that are ill in the the church, Lord. By your stripes we have been healed. And we have dominion over this earth, God. We command these things to fall by the wayside, to drop off those who are ill in this church in the name of Jesus. We command infirmity to leave. You have no power, no right. We are born again. We are sons and daughters of God. And we won't stand for it. We won't stand for it. We just pray for Jen's sister, Dawn. We curse you, you foul thing that you're trying to come upon her. We command you to go in the name of Jesus. We command the spirit of life to take charge of that woman. She already knows you. We bind the word of truth to her heart. We thank you for the love that you have for a God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the love. We thank you for the love that you have for us, God. God, bless bless us today. Bless us as we go. Bless us as we go into our week. Lord, help direct us in the things that you want to show us and unpack it and draw us to our purpose, God. You said if we draw near to you, you'll draw near to us. God, give us a thirst and a hunger for a relationship with you, Lord, that is above all the importance of everything else that's in our lives, God. Father, we want to we wanna see a greatness, a greater works that come out, Lord, driven by the faith and the spirit that's within us. Lord, help us to unpack that faith, that great faith you've put in us, each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope I've done the word justice this morning. But, uh, so thank you and bless you. Don't forget we've got um, five.